Okay. The scholars of Islam, may Allah have mercy upon them, have uh, discussed why this surah was revealed and when it was revealed. Uh, many of the ulama are of the opinion that this surah was revealed in Medina. Others are of the opinion that parts of it was revealed in Mecca. Ala kulli hal, there is, uh, there are a number of narrations in the books of Tafsir and in the books of the Sunnah that say that the reason for the revelation of this surah was because of an incident that happened with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and what they did. And this is the reason for the revelation for the majority or most of the surah. And that is that it is reported that once, as you know, Ali radiallahu anhu was very poor. Fatima radiallahu anhu was also very poor. Rasulullah did not have much wealth at all to give his family. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was very poor. How did he used to live? Well, he used to carry things on his head. He used to take water out of the well, and then from the well he would then, uh, after he took the water out, he would ferry the water for people. He would take heavy things on his head, and then, you know, ferry them from the market to people's homes. And then he would get some food at the end of the night. He would either get some barley or some raisins or some dates or some wheat. And he would take that back home to Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, and then she would then cook and try and make some meal out of it. Perhaps if there was some wheat that she would make bread out of it, etc. So it was reported once that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu came back and he had some wheat with him. And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she made the wheat and she baked the wheat and she made three pieces of bread. One for her, one for him, for Ali radiallahu anhu, and one for Hassan Hussein because they were small and so one of them, one piece was enough for two of them. However, as she was baking the bread and the bread was finished and they were all hungry, you know, the whole family was hungry, they hadn't eaten the whole day. And I don't know how many times we eat today, but at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, people only had one meal. <clears throat> one meal. There wasn't this, you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner business. It was one meal, ya akhi. That, that, that was it. Many a times that's all they could, they could afford. So they cooked three pieces of bread but then what happened was as she was going to serve the pieces of bread to the family then three people came past one of them was a yatim an orphan another one was a poor beggar and another one was a prisoner of war that had just been released by the muslims and obviously prisoners of war when they have been released by the muslimin they don't have any wealth as you know and what's also understood is that prisoners of war are usually non-muslims correct because they were taken in a battle or jihad etc and they were they were uh, imprisoned and then they were released. So when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Fatima radiallahu anhu, when Fatima saw these people, he gave one piece of bread to each one of them. One of them came, he gave a piece, she, she, gave, she gave a piece of bread. The other one came, she gave a piece of bread until they had nothing left at all. And unfortunately, the whole family went to sleep hungry. They were famished. And I don't know about you, but hunger pains, when they happen, they can be really, really severe. So Allah was amazed at their, at their uh, at their behavior, so he revealed the surah called Surah Insan. Uh, many of the ulama say that this is da'if, that this is not an authentic narration. Uh, however, what is well known, what is understood is that from the words and the verses of this surah, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jannah in one of the greatest details that he has in any verses of the Quran. And what is unique about these descriptions of Jannah, as Ibn al Jawzi rahimahullah says in his tafsir, he says, Notice how Allah did not mention Hurul Ain in these descriptions of Jannah at all. Allah did not. In many verses of the Quran, when Allah gives a de detailed description of Jannah, he mentions Hurul Ain. Who are the Hurul Ain? Are the beautiful women of Jannah, right? But in these verses, Allah does not mention Hurul Ain. Why? Ibn al Jawzi, may Allah have mercy upon him, in Zad al Musir, which is his tafsir, he says that is because these verses were revealed for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and Fatima was a very jealous woman and that is why Ali did not take another wife during the time when Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha was alive. So Allah did not want to offend Fatima, Allahu Akbar. Allah did not want to offend Fatima and so he revealed verses in the Quran without mention of the Hurul Ain. And he, wallahi, when I read this from Zad al-Masir I was I was bamboozled. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha's, 
you know, heart and for her jealousy so much, they did not even mention Hur al Whereas everywhere else in detailed description, he always mentioned Hur al So glory be to Allah Azza wa Jal. Glory be to Allah. So if there's any sister out there who thinks that Jannah is only for men, <laughs> and sometimes I've heard women say that because men, and men get women in Jannah, what do we get? You know, you get that question all the time, right? I get that question all the time. I said, listen to Surah Insan. Listen to Surah Insan. No mention of Hur al at all. And subhanallah, how Allah will make you happy and how Allah will make all people happy. So my sisters in Islam, Allah will make you happy, amply happy in Jannah. And my brothers in Islam, Allah will make us happy too. Alhamdulillah. Even though there's no mention of Hurul Ain here, it's there somewhere else in the Quran. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So, ala kulli hal, Alhamdulillah. Beautiful surah. Let's take the surah, Surah Insan. In the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Insan and how Insan is not as high and mighty as he thinks he is. This Quran and this Akhirah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is not for the insan who thinks he is high and mighty. The Akhirah, the Jannah, is for those people who are going to humble themselves. Our Shaykh, may Allah have mercy upon him, he used to recite the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tilka darul Akhirah, allati naj'aluha lilladheena la yuridoona fil ardi uluwa wa la fasada. This is the hereafter, that is the hereafter, that we will make for those people who do not want Highness, ascendancy, uluwa, any highness over others. And that is why, ya ikhwati, always humble yourselves. And people like myself who are sitting here on a position of highness above you, or who have titles, doctors, lawyers, imams, scholars, etc. We have to humble ourselves. I remember once, Shaykh ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah, went to visit him. And Shaykh ibn Uthameen, rahimahullah, this is one of my friends narrating this incident. I didn't see it myself. But one of my friends narrated this incident that he went to visit Shaykh Ibn rahimahullah, and he found that the Shaykh had come out for his Asr Salah, Asr prayer without shoes. I don't know about you, but Unayza is very hot. Unayza, 55 degrees Celsius, is very, very hot. The, the earth is burning. But the Shaykh came out without shoes. And the Shaykh used to walk very, very fast, like the Sunnah of the Prophet to walk very fast until the Sahaba would struggle to run with him. They used to say the Sahaba would run next to Rasulullah because he used to walk so fast. So Ibn Uthim was walking very fast. So he decided to ask the Shaykh some questions. But the first question is that he asked him, Shaykh, what happened to your shoes? You want my shoes? Why are you not wearing shoes? So, so, so the Shaykh said, can't you see? All of you call me Shaykh. All if you call me Alim, all if you call me Ibn Uthameen, Alim, this, Bahr al-Ilm, Kada wa Kada, Faqih al-Faqih, this and that. What if whatever you said enters my heart? So I walk without shoes to remind myself how much a human being I am. Allahu Akbar. So, Yaqwati, my brothers, my sister in Islam, we have to humble ourselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbles us in the beginning and He tells us, does insan think that he is so great that people will always know him and remember him? Or was there ever a time when insan was nothing at all, not even something which people could recognize? And that's true. Because we were created after the angels, after the jinn, after Jannah and Jahannam. We were created very late. We were not created early. So we were not the ones who have been known by everyone throughout the ages. There were a period of time no one knew who we were or what insan is. So let us not think that we are so great and so high and mighty at all. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and He talks about it and He talks about why He created mankind and why and how He wanted to test us and because of this test He gave us the hearing and the eyesight. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only one verse about the punishment. He talks about how Allah has created Jahannam and the punishments of Jahannam. Then he moves straight away into talking about Jannah and talks about a very quick description of Jannah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us from the water and the most beautiful drinks of Jannah to drink in which all these amazing things will be mixed in. And he tells us the reason why. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this Jannah is because of Firstly, Allah tells us because we fulfill our oaths, 
But secondly and most importantly, Allah will tell us in the middle part of this surah why He has given us Jannah and that is because we feed people food. We feed people food out of the love of Allah Azawajal. In fact, the whole surah is about Jannah for one group of people. Who is that group of people? The ones who يُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا Ya Rab. Ya Ikhwati, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, we are all learning to be very sophisticated human beings. You know, brothers and sisters, they come to me and say, you know what, I'm going to be a mechatronics engineer because I'm going to help Islam and Muslimin by creating cars that float and do this and that. You know, people come to me with the most amazing ways that they are thinking of to help Islam. But guess what? The verses of the Quran and the hadith and ayat are all full of the most simplest of deeds. يُطْعِمُونَ ta'am, They feed people food. What was the very first advice of Rasulullah when he entered Medina? Imagine, Akhi, what's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad, Muhammad, imagine you are now elected as the Prime Minister of Malaysia. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. So Muhammad is now going to be the next Prime Minister of Malaysia. What is the first lecture you're going to give? Imagine now you have to give your inaugural speech. Inaugural speech. MashaAllah, Muhammad Faisal been elected the Prime Minister of Malaysia. The first speech is called the most important speech, right? What did Obama say? Obama said, yes, we can. So what is Muhammad Faisal going to say? What do you think the Prophet ﷺ said? So imagine when Rasulullah went to Medina when, in his hijrah. That is when he was now going to be the king or the ruler over Medina, correct? What do you think the Prophet ﷺ said the first thing? Amazing. You would think he's going to play out his strategy, he's going to talk about, yes, we can. Da, 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 da. No, very simple. In the authentic hadith, in Sunan al Tirmidhi, it is reported the first advice of Rasulullah when he entered Medina. What did he say? أول ما سمع عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يدخل المدينة يا أيها الناس أو من كان أطعم الطعام feed people food الله أكبر وأفش السلام spread the salam وصلوا بالليل والناس النيام and pray at the depths of the night when people are asleep تدخل الجنة بسلام you will enter Jannah in peace and happiness الله أكبر the most simplest of advice you cannot imagine and that is the simplest of advice that today we need to give as well. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, feeding people food is a noble deed. Feeding people food is a noble deed. Do you know how many people are hungry today who go to sleep with less than one meal every day? 820 million people. One-seventh of the world population will go to sleep one-tenth, I'm sorry, of the world population will go to sleep or one-ninth of the world population will go to sleep without food today. And do you know of these seven, eight, 820 million people, the vast majority are Muslim, Because they're in Muslim countries. Where are they? They are in India and majority of the poor in India are Muslims. The biggest of the poor are actually Muslim. They're in Bangladesh. I'll tell you, that's 170 million people. That's Muslimin in Pakistan, in Africa, many Muslim countries, in Indonesia, 250 million Muslims. Of them, so many are so hungry. And because of this, Christianity is spreading so fast there. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, Allah will ask us about this. And when we read this verse and read this surah, I want everyone to make up their mind that every day, no matter what, Every day you will have one meal and you will feed one more person one meal as well. Very easy, wallahi. Three or four ringgit, two ringgits. Today, now we started a project for feeding, feeding people in Mercy Mission. We found that we can feed somebody for as less as two ringgits or one and a half ringgits if we do it in a mass in a bulk way. SubhanAllah, it's so easy. Five ringgits you can feed somebody for the whole day. Very easy to do, ya khua. Very easy to do. And if you feed people, Allah will give you what He has promised in this surah. So let's take this surah and learn about the most beautiful description of Jannah Allah has given us. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful to all creation, the specifically merciful to human beings. 
هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا Has there ever come a time دهر means time هل أتى على الإنسان Has there come upon إنسان حين من الدهر A moment of دهر دهر meaning time لم يكن شيئا مذكورا Where he was nothing at all Where he was nothing at all No one knew who he was What he would be What sort of creation he would be Absolutely It is reported from the Mufassirin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He wanted to create us, He created our surah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He created us from the surah, which is our image. And only Allah knows what He means by the image. So, the scholars of Tafsir mentioned that for 40 years Allah created a surah but did not create the insan. And only after 40 years, after creating the surah, then He created insan. So we were. A surah and the angels and jinn knew about this surah but they didn't know what we were. So Allah is referring to that moment of time when He had created our surah, our image, but people did not know who we were and the other creations did not know what sort of creation we would be. So has there not come a time upon insan when he was nothing that people could recognize? Inna khalaqna al insana min nutfatin amshaj. Verily, we created human beings from nutfa. What is nutfa? A clot of blood. Amshajin. What is Amshaj? Amshaj means something that is mixed with each other. What is mixed? That is the egg from the woman and the semen from the man. The fluids from the woman and the fluid from the man, right? These are the two things when it is mixed together. Amshajin meaning mixed together. Then Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from the clot. Amshajin nut, uh, Amshajin Nabatalihi. So we decided to test him. Nabatalihi, we decided to test him. Ibtila is to do test. So Nabatalihi meanings we decided to test him. So what does Allah say? Fajalnahu Sami'an Basira. And because of this, we made him Sami'an, hearing, wa basira, and able to see. So Ya Ikhwati, our eyesight and our hearing are our means of test. And that is why, Ya Ikhwati, you should see no evil, hear no evil. You should see only good and hear only good. If you cannot, then close your ears. And if you cannot, then lower your gaze. And that is why the scholars of Islam, it was reported that when they used to go through the markets, they used to close their ears. Why? Because in the markets, they would hear all sorts of rubbish. And when they used to see women, they would lower their gaze. Why? Because that is the means of test. So our hearing and our eyesight and our mouth, these are all means of test. And that is what Allah has given us, the hearing and eyesight. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, protect it. Protect your hearing and your eyesight. Inna hadayna sabila. So we guided him to the truth. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us intelligence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us fitra in the heart, intelligence in the mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the tawfiq in the qalb, in the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the risala and the message from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us. Inna hadaynahu sabila. Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. So he is either one of two things. We guided him to the way and we gave him free choice. So he is imma shakir. He is thankful wa imma kafur. Or he is ungrateful and he is sinful and so he is a kafir. What is a kafir? A kafir is someone who hides. Originally the word kafir used to mean fallah. A fallah was a kafir. So the early Arabs, what's a fallah? I'm sorry, a fallah is a farmer. The farmers were called kuffar. <laughs> the farmers were called kuffar. So I know people, if you don't want to be farmers, I understand. Farmers were called kuffar. Why? Because they used to hide the seed under the earth. So they were called kafir because they used to hide. hide. So when you hide the seed under the earth, you call a kafir because you're hiding the seed under the earth. So who is a kafir? A kafir is someone who hides the truth. Someone who hides the truth. Truth of what? The truth of Islam in their heart, the truth of their fitra. They hide the fact that they in their hearts know Allah, but they still do not believe. They hide the truth, right? That's why they call kuffar. Okay? So, Imma Shakir. Who is a Shakir? Shakir is someone who not only praises Allah, but ziyada ala al hamd. So, shukur, as the ulama say, is ziyada ala al hamd. So, hamd is to say alhamdulillah. Hamd means praise. It says, Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah. Shukr is 
upon that ziyada upon just praising Allah. So what is the ziyada? What is the extra upon praising Allah? It is the fact that you're praying on time. It is the fact that you're memorizing Quran. So kayfa hamidta Allah? How did you praise Allah? I said Alhamdulillah. Kayfa shakarta Allah? How did you praise? How did you thank Allah? Well, I praised him and then I memorized the Quran and I implemented it. That's how I thanked him. So thanking Allah means by action. Thanking Allah cannot be but just by statement. Thanks, thanks to Allah must be by action. So ask yourself, what have you done to thank Allah? Have you fed people? Have you memorized the Quran? Have you said more salah? Have you done more da'wah? Have you asked people, invited them to Islam? What have you done to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Tayyip? فَإِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ Verily, we have prepared for the disbelievers. Salasil. What's salasil? It's ropes. And these are not simple ropes. These are ropes made of fire. They are molten iron ropes. And we took them in Surah Haqqa. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Khuduhu fagulluh. Thumma al jahima salluh. Thumma fi silsilatin dharuhuha sab'una dhira'an faslukuh. In a yard of 70 yards, tie him up, of ropes of 70 yards, tie him up. And we remember what Sufyan al-Thawri said. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, said, it has been reported that the angels will tie a person up so hard that they will put the rope through his bottom and bring it up from his mouth. Kada qala Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah. So, inna a'tadna, verily we are prepared, lil kafirin, for, for disbelievers, salasil, ropes, wa aglal, locks. What are aglal? Aglal are locks. Like you know the locks that are put on your hands and then you're tied together or your hands are tied together or you're tied to the walls. Aglal. These are the locks that are put on your hands and on your feet. Aglalan wasa'ira and jahannam and the fire. So Allah has prepared for the disbelievers ropes and locks and the fire. Meaning that they will be put into ropes and locks and then thrown into the fire. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who disbelieve. But let's not talk about the disbelievers today. Today we want to talk about the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on directly now. Straight away after only one verse talking about punishment. He moves on and he talks about now Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Innal abrar. Verily those who are abrar. Yashrabun, they will drink. Min ka'sin, from glasses. Okay, or cups. Yashrabuna min ka'sin. Kana mizajuha kafura. Mixed into it will be camphor, kafur. Has anyone tasted camphor? No? You should taste it. It's amazing. It leaves a taste in your mouth. It's very strong, so you should mix it into something like what, like water, or into drinks, or into let's say, uh, you know, next time you can buy camphor, and you you can mix a little bit of it into uh, what's a nice juice to drink, orange juice or apple juice, not apple juice. Uh, sorry, man, I'm very bad with food. Uh, mix it into watermelon juice. That's better. Mix a little bit of camphor into watermelon juice, and you see the taste it creates. Allahu Akbar. But this is the camphor of the Akhira. Okay? This is the camphor of the Akhira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the Abrar. Who are the Abrar? Man hum al-Abrar? Well, first of all, we have the good deeds, which is a'mal al-saliha. Right? Then we have good deeds that are done with ihsan. That are called good deeds that are done with ihsan. Those are called that is the a'mal. These are the, these are the actions which are done with ihsan. But then above them come another level. And that is called bir. So bir is the highest of ihsan. Yaqulul ulama, bir is the highest level of ihsan. What is ihsan? Ihsan is that you do an action. You do an action thinking Allah is in front of you. And if you cannot think Allah is in front of you, then know that Allah sees you. So that's ihsan, right? But the highest level of ihsan is called bir. And that is why bir means the highest level of ihsan you can do. Which is not only do you feed people, for example, you know, there's miskin, we feed miskin, no. 
but do the miskeen as if he's your son. Put the food into his mouth and rub his hand, rub his hair with kindness and mercy and love. Tayyip, this is called bir. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to have bir with our parents. Because the difference between their action to us and our action to them is that when we look after our parents, we don't achieve bir. We should be achieving bir. But when they are good to us, they have bir with us. Why? Because not only are they giving us charity by looking after us, but they love us when they're giving their charity. They love the fact that even though you're drinking their milk and giving them difficulty, like I see my wife when she breastfeeds her baby, my little girl. She is now one month old, mashallah. When she breastfeeds her, she is so happy and, and hugging her and kissing her. Even though my wife has to wake up in the middle of the night to feed her, right? Even then, she's still the most happiest person. Alhamdulillah, I have her. This is called birr. And that is why a man came to Umar radiallahu, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and said, Ya, ya Abdullah, I took my mother on my back for all of Hajj, all of Hajj from, from uh, Arafat to Muzdalifa to Mina to Makkah to Tawaf to Sa'i and then went back to Mina. All of Hajj, I did her with my back, my old mother. And then he said, do you think that I have repaid her? I have repaid my mother for what she has done to me? For Abdullah ibn Umar said, Wallahi, not for even one tinge of pain that she felt, not for even one tinge of pain when she felt when she was giving birth to you. Wallahi, you haven't repaid her. Allahu Akbar. It should put shame in our faces. Do we have bir or not? Another man, it was reported, another incident, authentic report. Listen to this one. Wallahi, this is amazing. Amazing. A man came to Umar radiallahu ta'ala and said, Ya Umar, I looked after my, my parents for 10 years of my life. I fed them food. I earned money and I fed them food and I looked after them and tended to them until they died. Do you think I have done for them what they have done for us? So Umar said, La, Abadan. He said, Why not? Why are you saying this, Ya Umar, that I have not repaid them? Why? Because I've, Wallahi, cared for them. He said something, Wallahi, look at, look, at, look at what Umar said. He said, because when they looked after you, they made dua to Allah every day. Oh Allah, do not let my children leave my house. Oh Allah, don't let them grow up, don't let them leave. But you, when you looked after them, you prayed for that day, when will they die? When will it finish? When will you not have to ever look after them anymore? Ya Salaam. Ya Salaam. Isn't this true? You know what's in your heart. You know when you look after your parents, you don't have the same level of ihsan and bir like they had. They hate the day you leave. They make dua you never leave. But you can't wait for the moment saying, Oh, I've had enough of this. La ilaha illallah. How will we ever repay our parents? How will we ever repay them? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna rida al rab fi rida al walidain, wa sakhat al rab fi sakhat al walidain. Verily, the happiness of Allah is by the happiness of the parents, and the anger of Allah is by the anger of your parents. So, my brothers and sisters, Islam, become abrar, become righteous people, abrar, those who have the highest level of ihsan to your parents and to those people when you do good. إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ يَشْرَبُونَ مِنْ كَأْسٍ كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا كَافُورًا Verily, the abra will drink from glasses of wine and juices and drinks. In it, mixed into it, will be the most amazing camphor. عَيْنًا يَشْرَهُ بِهَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ It will be a spring from which the slaves of Allah will drink. يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا Allah will cause it to bring forth, spring forth. Wherever he wills, tafjira, bring forth wherever he wills. What does it mean? Yaqulu ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said in the tafsir, he said, whenever a person wants to drink something, he will not have to go to the rivers of wine or to the you know, rivers of honey or milk or whatever else. As soon as he feels like drinking straight away from wherever he is, a spring will burst forth. 
A spring will burst. All he has to do is open his mouth. And if he doesn't have to open his mouth, the servants will bring the cups from which the springs will fill up the cups and they will give, give them to drink. يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا Meaning Allah will cause it to spring forth wherever He wills. يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ Why? Why, Ikhwati? Because they fulfill their oaths. يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ What does نَذْر mean? يُوفُون means they fulfill. نَذْر means oath. مَا مَعْنَى النَّذْر The scholars of Islam, they said, in the three madhabs other than the Shafi'i madhab, in the three madhabs, the majority of the ulama said, another is the wa'ad bi dhikri ismillah wa yakoonu al-amal fi mustaqbal. These are the three conditions of what another is. What is another? Another means, I swear by Allah, I will feed 500 people tomorrow. Okay? This is an example of a another. Okay? This is an example of an oath. So an oath is not when your wife comes to you or your mother comes to you, did you eat that, did you eat that ice cream that was in the fridge? Wallahi, I didn't eat it. Okay, this is not another. This is not, this is a wa'ad, a promise, a swear. But this is not another. Another is in the mustaqbal, amal fil mustaqbal, bi dhikri ismillah, aw sifat min sifatillah azza wa jal. Aw asma min ismin asma illa azza wa jal. Tayyib, okay? So uh, another, a swear or an oath or a promise which is binding on you is the one where you say Uqsimu billah, aw bi wajhillah, aw bil Qur'an, aw bil Rahman, aw bil mannan Okay, by one of the names of Allah That I will do so and so tomorrow Okay, and this is another, this is a swear by your mouth that you will do something tomorrow So this is the wa'ad, this is the promise so why am I saying that this is another? Another because this is the another which if you break, then you have to expiate. And the expiation of breaking another is what? What is the expiation of breaking another? Number one, you must free a slave. If you cannot free a slave, then you have to do one of three things. What are the three things? Either feed 10 poor people or clothe 10 poor people. Okay, two things. Either feed 10 poor people or clothe 10 poor people. If you cannot do this, then fast three days consecutively. Okay, so what is the expiation again? Let me tell you. If you make another and you do, and you do not fulfill it, then the expiation of this is one of three things. Free a slave. If you cannot free a slave or buy a slave and free him. If you cannot do so, then two things. Either feed 10 poor people or clothe 10 poor people. And if you cannot do that, only if you cannot do that, then fast three days consecutively. Okay, so Surah Ma'idah, go back to it, the expiation of breaking an oath. And the oath that is intended is the oath of in the future, bil mustaqbal, amalun fil mustaqbal, action in the future. But as long as you say that I, with, with one of the names of Allah Azza okay? So if you say, I will definitely feed 100 people tomorrow, but you don't end up doing it, this is not another. Okay, this is not another because you didn't say Wallahi. Okay? But if you say, Wallahi, I will do something tomorrow, then this becomes another, okay? It's very important. Allah will take us to account for our oaths. بِالنَّذْرِ They fulfill the oaths that they make with their mouth. وَيَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا And they fear a day. كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا They fear, they fulfill the oaths, and they fear a day. Why do they fear this day? Because the sharruhu, the evil of that day will be mustatira. What does mustatira mean? Istatara. What does istatara mean? It means that the evil of that day has become so widespread. The evil is in the faces of people, the evil is in the sky, the evil is on the earth. Evil is widespread. What are they referring to? The day of judgment. They're referring to the day of judgment when the sharr and the evil of that day is widespread. Everywhere you look around you, people are being hurt, people are being killed, people are being harmed. The angels are punishing, angels are burning, angels are tying up in ropes. People are being trampled on, others are each other's necks. Can you imagine that day? Subhanallah. يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا كَانَ شَرُّهُ مُسْتَطِيرًا That's why they fulfill the oaths. Ya if you, if you if you make an oath, you must fulfill it. You are only as good as your word. You are only as good as the word that you say. Your value as a human being, as a man, is by the word that you said. So never ever break your word. 
If you break your word, then you are not a human being. You're a worthless human being. Never ever break your word. If you give people your word, you must fulfill it, even if it kills you. Even if it kills you in the process. طيب. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامِ And this is the major point for which the ulama said that it was revealed because of the action of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامِ And they feed people food. عَلَى حُبِّهِ Because of his love. So they feed people not out of anything but out of the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Oh Allah, we love you, so we feed your people. يُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّ اللَّهِ Who do they feed? Miskeen. A poor person who has no food. وَيَتِيمُ An orphan who has no one to look after him. وَأَسِيرًا And a beggar. Ya ikhwati, first let me take the last part of, the, of this verse. Let, then, let, then let me come to the issue of loving Allah Azza wa Jal. Who is a miskeen? A miskeen is someone who does not have enough money for his upkeeping. The Hanafi Madhab says the miskeen is someone who is worse than the faqir. The miskeen according to the Hanafi Madhab is worse than the faqir. And the miskeen is someone who does not have enough food to eat. The miskeen according to the majority of the Madhabs, the other Madhahib, is someone who has food to eat but he does not have enough to look after his daily day to day living. He has food but he doesn't have clothes for example. He has food, he has a house but he doesn't have rent to pay for his house, a miskeen. So vast majority of tulab, for example are masakeen. Most of us here are masakeen because we only have enough money sometimes for a few days or a few weeks. We sometimes towards the end of the month we, we are struggling and so we are miskeen. So to feed tulab, students of knowledge, food out of the love of Allah is beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. That is a miskeen. Then comes yatim. Who is a yatim? In Islam, a yatim is someone who does not have a father but has a mother. He can have a mother but no father. Tayyib, and that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa and he was a yatim, wasn't he? Yatiman. He was a yatim, but he had a mother but no father. His father had passed away before he was born, correct? So Rasulullah Sallallahu was a yatim even though he had a mother. So therefore, a yatim is described as someone who does not have a father. Today, how many million orphans are there? I looked up the report. 165 million orphans worldwide. 165 million orphans worldwide. Yes, Salaam. Ya ikhwati, we have one of the most easiest ways to enter Jannah. Allah khaliq, look after an orphan. Look after an orphan. Wallahi, so easy. 30 ringgit, 100 ringgit, 50 ringgit a day, a month. That's it, wallahi. 100 ringgit a month. Wallahi, so easy. Wallahi, so easy. Look after an orphan. Look after an orphan. Ana wa kafilul aytami hakada. I and the one who looks after an orphan will be like this in Jannah, like this. Ya Akhil Kareem, look after an orphan. Please make a firm resolve today that you will not leave this room except you will make sure every time you have a food, you're giving one miskeen food as well. Every day some miskeen is eating your food and every day looking after an orphan. So two people you must look after every day. A yatim and a miskeen. Every day, wallahi. So that every day Allah has mercy on you and every day Allah gives you khair and barakah in your life. And the third person Allah says Asira, Asir. Who is an Asir? A prisoner of war. Why have we forgotten the prisoners? We're about to celebrate our Eid very soon. Why have we forgotten the Guantanamo Bay prisoners? Why have we forgotten the thousands that are in prison in the Muslim countries? Why have we forgotten the prisoners here? Even if they deserved it. Even if, for example, someone actually stole and he deserved to be in prison. What, is he not your brother? Is he not your brother in Islam? Is there no mercy and rahmah in your heart? So let us not forget the prisoners and their families in this time as well. So make sure no Eid comes, except that you're, you're buying some gifts for some prisoners. And your ikhwati, this is a khair. In Mercy Mission, this is one of the things we do. We collect presents and gifts for prisoners towards Eid. So we give them a, a gift and we give their families gifts because they can't have their father or their brother with them on Eid day. Because you have your brother and sister with you, why can't they have theirs? 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the three people. And by the way, prisoners in a Muslim context are usually non-Muslim, isn't it? So can you understand that here Allah is talking about feeding human beings, not just Muslim beings? Meaning any human being, irrespective of whether he is Muslim or not, if he is in need, he is deserving of your mercy. And that is why the authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu in Musnad Imam Ahmed, he said, he said, the best of people, khayrun nas anfa'ahum lin nas. The best of mankind are the ones who are the most beneficial to mankind. Not the most beneficial to Muslimin per se only, but the most beneficial to mankind. The ulema used to say, يقول, uh, in majmu'. He says, Ajma'al ulema, the scholars of, of tafsir, uh, of scholars of fiqh have ijma' that the best of people are two types of people. Number one is the alim of Islam, the scholars of Islam, those who learn Islamic knowledge and then they preach it to others. And number two is, is the doctor, medical doctor, the one who helps and cures human beings and fixes and helps human beings at their most distressing time. Other ulema added a third person. Other scholars added a third person. Who is the third person? The rich person, the rich businessman who gives his wealth in the cause of Allah Azawajal, who gives his cause in the, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ikhwati, when I remembered, when I read this statement in Majmu'a of an nawawi that's when I told myself, I'm going to learn Islam and I'm going to learn medicine as well. That's why I decided to be a medical doctor and also study Islam. Ya ikhwati, you must try to be the best and the most valuable to mankind because that is the person who is the most valuable on the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters Islam, these are the three people that we must look after. Now let's come back to the first part of the verse. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّ اللَّهِ عَلَى حُبِّهِ Allahu Akbar Ya ikhwati, has the time not come to love Allah Azza wa Jal? Has the time not come to love Allah? Ya Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, the one who loves us more than our, our parents. Yaqulu Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he says, Wallahi, I will not replace Allah. I will not replace Allah with my parents to be my judge on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, I will rather have Allah judge me, not my parents. Because I know Allah loves me more than my parents. Ya ikhwati, if you believe Allah loves you, then Allah will love you. If you do things with the love of Allah, Allah will love you. How can we not love Allah? Alladheena kafaru Those who disbelieve They have taken gods Yuhibboonahum ka hubbillah They have taken gods and they love them just like they should love Allah Walladheena amanu And those who believe Ashaddu hubban lillah Ashaddu hubban lillah They are more severe in the love of Allah How have you proven your love to Allah? What have you done to prove your love to Allah? What have you done to prove your love to Allah? And if you have any doubt that Allah loves you, then answer this question. Why does Allah provide food for you when you sin? Why does Allah give you wealth and money and good health even when you're sinning? Because Allah loves us. If Allah didn't love you, why is He sharing this Qur'an with you now? Why has He given you the time and the ability and the health to be here today? Learn about this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't love us, why did He create Jannah with so much blessings? Why? Because Ya Ikhwati, truly Allah does love us. And He wants khair for us. And He wants us to love Him back. So how have you proven your love to Allah Azawajal? Those who have taken gods other than Allah, they love their gods like they should love Allah. Those who, dis those who believe they love Allah even more. I want to give you one simple example. Do you know that in America there are 50 million evangelical Christians? Do you know how much they love their God? Do you know how much they love their God? It is reported that the evangelical Christians give on average 20% of their income 
every month to the church. Also, many of the evangelical Christians, they leave their cushy jobs, their beautiful homes in America, and their beautiful houses and their beautiful cars, and they go to some small village in Africa with their wives and their children. They go to some small village somewhere in Indonesia, somewhere in the barren lands of Siberia. They will stay there and they'll build a church and they'll translate the Bible and they will learn the language and they will call to Jesus Christ for the rest of their life. This is how much they love Allah. Now question for you is this. If Allah says, amanu ashaddu lillah, that we should be doing more than them. Otherwise we are not amanu. We are not from the people who have believed. Because our love for Allah is not more than their love. Then how can we be from the amanu? How can we be from the mu'minun? We must love Allah more than anyone else loves their gods. We must prove to Allah we love Him more than anyone else. More than our children, more than our families, more than anyone else. And that is why, you know, today we say the most important thing is family. Khata hada, khata. Khata, that's wrong. The most important thing is our deen. The most important thing is Allah. We should be putting our families into difficulty for Allah. Today we put people in difficulty. We put Allah second. We shouldn't. Allah is first. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, the way a believer leads his life is like a bird. Have you seen a bird? A bird has a body and he has two wings. So the body of the bird is love of Allah. One of the wings is fear of Allah. But as soon as he beats his wing of fear, he has the other wing, which is hope. Ar-Raja. Fal-Hub wal-Khawf wal-Raja. Allahu Akbar. So that which pushes you forward is love of Allah Azawajal. Why you do things is because we love Ar-Rahman. Why we're fasting today is because we love Allah Azawajal. How can we not fast? Why we're reading the Quran is because of love of Allah Azawajal. How can we not read the Quran? And then we have fear of Allah. And as soon as we have fear, we have raja. We have hope from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful description of the ubudiyah of the slave. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّ اللَّهِ وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And they feed out of the love of Allah a miskin and a yatim and a prisoner of war. They say, Meaning they don't say it loudly, they say it softly to their hearts. What do they say? Like sometimes we speak to ourselves without speaking it, we're thinking it. So what do we think and what do they say? They say, Innama nut'imukum li wajhillah. We feed you for the face of Ar-Rahman. For, for looking at the face of Allah. What do you mean by wajhillah? Means so that we can look at Allah on the day of judgment. Because there is nothing better than looking at Allah Azza wa Jal. The greatest distress on the day of judgment for the disbelievers will, will be they will never be able to see Ar Rahman. The greatest blessings of the believers will be to see Allah. So whenever you see on the whenever people say, Hadali wajhillah, this is for wajhillah, what does it mean? It means I'm doing this so I can see the wajh of Allah on the, on, on the day of judgment. And that is why Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah say that Allah, Allah will be able to be seen on the day of judgment. Until even the Asha'ira. Those who believe that Allah cannot be seen because it is improbable to, to, to be see Allah, even amongst the Ashaira are, are there are the ulama of the Ashaira such as in the topic of Asma Sifa, such as Ibn Hajar Rahimallah, who says in Fatul Bari, Tawatarat al Ahadith. The number of hadith about seeing Allah are mutawatir, that Allah will be seen on the day of judgment. So even Ibn Hajar says Allah will be able to be seen on the day of judgment. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ Verily we feed you food out of the face of Allah, love for the face of Allah. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We do not ask you for anything. Jaza, a reward, nor a shukur, nor a thanks. Ya ikhwati, you know sometimes when we do something good for people, and people say, what can I do for your brother? Nothing brother, just make dua for me. Don't we say this? Just make dua for me. That's wrong. Don't even ask for dua. Because Allah says, La nuridu minkum. We don't want anything from you. Nor a reward, nor a thanks. 
What is dua but a thank you? So do not even ask for dua. Nothing, Habibi, I'm not doing, I don't want anything from you. Do not tell anyone. Nothing, this is just for you. Do not even make dua, nothing, just for you. You enjoy it. That's it, it's for you because you deserve it. And then you go outside whilst the person is looking and say, Ya Rabbi, this is for your face. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Neither a reward nor a thanks. إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا Verily we are doing this because we fear Allah. إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا Verily we fear from Allah. يَوْمًا عَبُوسٌ مَا مَعَنَا عَبُوسٌ We fear a day which is عَبُوس. عَبُوس is very severe. A day which is extremely harsh. Extremely harsh. Okay? Very severe day. Very severe day. Abus is a day which is very severe. Extremely severe in every way. Heat is severe. Standing is severe. Punishment is severe. The scream is severe. Everything is very severe. Yawman abusan qamtarira. What is qamtarir? So very severe and very terrible. Extremely terrible day. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ Because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ Allah saved them. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ So Allah saved them from the evil of that day. وَلَّقَّاهُمْ نَضْرَةً وَسُرُورًا And instead of fear, Allah will put on their faces نَضْرَةً which is brightness and happiness وَسُرُورًا and smiling. Allah will make them smile and put happiness and brightness on that day. Yaqulu al-ulama, the scholars of Tafsir said, whilst for all the people who have disbelieved and they have been bad in this dunya, the standing will be 50,000 years. For the muttaqoon, they will not be made to stand. They will be given horses and riding beasts on the plains of the day of judgment. They will be given to drink. When everyone is not being given to drink, they will have drinks. When no one has shade, the muttaqoon will have shade. When for people, it will feel like 50,000 years. For the muttaqoon, it will feel like one evening only. Allahu Akbar. So, yawman abus and qam tarira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed all of this from the people who fed people food out of his love. Wallahi, so easy to do. So easy to do. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَٰلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَضْرَةً وَسُرُورًا And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts talking about Jannah. Rest of, the, rest of the surah, apart from the last few verses, are all about Jannah now. Listen to the description of Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Ya ikhwati, the scholars of Islam said that it has authentically reported from the books of the Sunan that this ummah will be the first of the people to enter Jannah. We are the last ummah but the first to enter Jannah, insha'Allah. The number of people that will enter Jannah will be 120 rows. That's it. Only 120 rows of people will enter Jannah. But 80 rows will be from this ummah. Allahu Akbar. 80 rows will be from this ummah. Our bodies will be made bigger. We are six foot tall today and we only 60 kilos or 100 kilos today. But on the Day of Judgment, Allah will make our bodies big. In narrations which the scholars have differed onto their authenticity, we will be the height of Ibrahim, the height of Adam, والسلام, 60 feet tall and 7 feet wide. And we will be made into the images of Yusuf, والسلام, the most amazing beauty. Our age will be 33 years old, even though, even though we are at the age of 60 or 70, we might, we might die or two or three or five or ten, whenever we die, we will enter Jannah at the age of 33 years old. Allahu Akbar. So read about Jannah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا And He rewarded them because of their patience. What is Allah referring to their sabr? Remember what I said? The highest of sabr is to do good deeds, constancy in doing good deeds. So whenever you read sabaru and the reward is there, not because of the lowest of sabar, the highest of sabar, which is constancy in ibadah. And what is ibadah that has been referred to here? It's the feeding people food. So you don't feed people only once, you do it all the time. 
And that's when Allah says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا And He rewarded, rewarded them because of their constancy and patience in feeding people food. بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Jannah and all the harir which is silk is from Jannah but He has specialized the silk here. Why? Because it is so amazing. Allahu Akbar. Have you seen the silk of Jannah? Ya, ya Salam. The silk of Jannah, Ya Salam. How amazing it must be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specializing harir even though the harir is from the Jannah. He says, Jannah wa harira. Allahu Akbar. Muttaki'ina fiha ala al araik. They'll be reclining upon beautiful couches. La yarawna fiha shamsa wa la zamharira. They will not see the hot sun. La yarawna fiha. They will not see. Shamsan, no shams, the heat of the sun. Wala, za, wala zamharir. What is zamharir? Ooh, cold, extreme cold. You know the extreme cold? I remember when I was in Medina. You know, Medina is very hot. But some days it used to be so cold. Five degrees Celsius it used to get to Medina sometimes. And you know, I'm from Australia, so alhamdulillah, we're used to the cold. But I used to see our brothers from Africa. Our brothers, the African students, they used to come out all these ski these huge jackets, you know, these ski jackets. I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? Is it that cold? I said, yeah, wallah, it's too cold. <laughs> it's only 15 degrees, but they used to freeze in that because they're not used to the cold at all. So this is zamharir. Zamharira is the cold that goes to your bone. So you will not feel the cold, nor the heat. So therefore, if you don't have the sun, where will you get light from? The scholars of Islam, they said the light will be from the throne of Allah. The light in Jannah will be from the throne of Ar-Rahman. It will illuminate all of Jannah, Allahu Akbar. Because we know that the throne of Ar-Rahman is the biggest thing. The biggest creation that has ever been created is the throne, the Arsh of Ar-Rahman. What is the proof for that? The proof for that is the dua that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tell us to make. Okay, where he used to say, Subhanallahi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimati. Glory be to Allah, or praise be to Allah, adada khalqihi, by the number of his creation, wa zinata arshihi, and by the weight of his throne. So therefore, the scholar said in this dua, Rasulullah mentioned the highest of everything, and as a result, he has mentioned the highest of things created, and that must be the throne. لا يرون فيها شمس ولا زمهريرا ودانية عليهم ظلالها and close by them will be the shade which is of the trees in Jannah وظللت قطوفها تذليلا and the 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 shade will be so close it will give them perfect shade تذليلا means perfect shade from the light of the throne even though the light of the throne is not hot. But still, a little bit of shade because you are the king in your throne. And they will run around them. Who will be running around? Allah will describe. Those people, those servants, we will have servants who will be running around. And all of these servants will be running around. With all these utensils and these vessels and these cups. Min fiddah. From silver. And aqwab meaning cups. They are made of crystal. So what is the crystal? Have you seen crystal here in this dunya? Have you seen cups of crystal or not? You haven't seen it? Uh, you can go to one utama <laughs> and just go past one of the shops. <laughs> and, you just, and you can just look for a very expensive shop there like British India or something like that and just look at the crystal crystal uh, cups and all of that okay very amazing crystal and if you see there is a company called Swaz Swazkov that make beautiful crystal artifacts okay but the crystal in this dunya is made of silica which is out of sand which is made of obviously glasses right so crystal of this dunya is made of sand but Allah says that these cups are full of silver beautiful silver brocades in these cups and they're made of crystal so what is this crystal Allah says look at the next verse Qawarira min fiddah 
This is crystal not made of silica. This is crystal made of silver. What? How can you get crystal made of silver? It's un unimaginable. Because crystal shines through, the light shines through. And you can see the other side from one side. This is crystal. But Allah is describing that the silver will be beaten out into crystal so perfect that you'll be able to see the other side from the inside because this is crystal made of silver, not made out of silica, cheap silica of this dunya. Wallahi, it just amazes me. Because you think about crystal made of silver, it's unbelievable. But these are crystals made of silver. Qawarira min fiddatin. He has perfectly made it and perfectly proportioned it. So when you see the crystals, how perfectly they're made so that the light shines through and dazzles the whole place, like those crystals there, dazzles the whole place. But this is Allah's perfection. This is not a human being's perfection. This is Allah's perfection. He has perfected it and proportioned it in absolute perfection. وَيُسْقَوْنَ فِيهَا كَأْسًا كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا زَنْجَبِيلًا And they'll be given to drink from cups in which will be mixed ginger. You know, when I was in Australia, I thought there was nothing but Coke and Fanta and water. Because everything else was alcohol in Australia, so I couldn't drink it. When I came to Malaysia, I discovered so many drinks. The most amazing drinks with the most amazing sweetness and the most amazing things in it. And this is a drink Allah will give us in which will be mixed zanjabil, which is ginger. So imagine drinking it, you get that hint of ginger at the end. Allahu Akbar. Okay, I don't know if you can feel it. Today I feel extremely thirsty and hungry. And all of these verses of the Quran are not helping me at the moment. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. وَيُسْقَوْنَ فِيهَا كَأْسًا كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا زَنْجَبِيلَ Mixed into it will be ginger, beautiful ginger. عَيْنًا فِيهَا تُسَمَّى سَلْسَبِيلَ عَيْنًا It will be a spring in Jannah that is called Salsabil. Why is this spring called Salsabil? A special spring that is called Salsabil. Why is it called Salsabil? Because of its tasalsul, because it keeps on coming. Meaning that once you drink it, it'll be more, non-ending. It's non-ending. You want more here? You want more? Here. Some more? More. No problem. It will be non-ending. Salsabil, tasalsul. It will be more drink after drink after drink after drink as much as you want. Because your equity, you will not drink out of thirst. Once you drink from the pond of Rasulullah which is Al-Kawthar, which is on the earth, on the earth of the day of judgment, you will be no longer thirsty ever again. So you will not drink in Jannah out of thirst. You will drink out of pure pleasure. Out of pure pleasure. Allahu Akbar. Aynan fiha tu samma sal sabila. Ya Rab, do not deny this from us. Wa yatufu alayhim. And they will run around them. Do tawaf around them. Tawaf meaning? Not tawaf in the seven circuits. But running around all the time. Meaning looking after your needs. Who? Who will look after your needs? The angels? No, the angels will give us salam. And they'll bring us beautiful things. But our servants in Jannah will be little babies, little boys. Can you imagine? You know, I have a little girl, Maryam. She's four years old. And every time I say, Maryam, can you get me a drink of water? She runs off like this, you know? She runs off with all her hair moving and she goes and she gets all the water and she's slowly holding it. You know, when she brings it, she's very afraid it's going to fall. She brings it very slowly, very slowly brings it to me. I said, Subhanallah, wa yutafu alayhim wildanun. And they will run around them, children, wildan, young boys and young girls, wildan, mukhalladun, meaning they'll be forever young, forever young, they will not age. And these are our servants in Jannah that are waiting for us. وَيُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ حَسِبْتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤًا مَنْثُورًا If you were to see them, if you just saw them, you'd think them they're lu'lu and manthura. They're so beautiful, they're like pearls, like scattered pearls. Like you take a scattered necklace, a pearl necklace, you tear off the pearls and you throw them all around. And you see the pearls scattering and jumping. Have you seen them scattering and jumping? And that's how they were. They're your servants running around for you, doing all your needs and whatever you need. Allahu Akbar. وَيُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ 
إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا يا أخوتي الله سبحانه وتعالى has given two creatures the description of لؤلؤ the first is the servants he's called them لؤلؤا منثورا which means scattered pearls whereas whereas the حور العين have also been called لؤلؤ in other verses in the Quran I have to talk about حرولين I can't يا أخي so he's talked about حور العين and he's called them لؤلؤ but he called them لؤلؤا مكنونا they are called Lu'la Maknuna, meaning concealed pearls. So why does Allah call the Hurul Ain concealed pearls, but calls the servants scattered pearls? Yaqul ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he says in his tafsir, amazing tafsir, you should read it. He says in his tafsir, he said, because the servants are busy working for you. So they're all scattered around, meaning they're running around doing all the things that you need. This one giving you a foot massage, that one giving you a drink, that one bringing you perfume, you know? MashaAllah, amazing, I can't wait for it. Huh? But the, but the Hurul Ain are called Lu'lu and Maknuna, they're called concealed pearls because they are not made for work. They're not your servants, they're made for your pleasure only. Allahu Akbar. Kada Kala ibn al Jawzi. رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. طيب ويطاف عليهم ولدان مخلدون إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤ أم منثورا وإذا رأيت and when you were to see ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا and if in all this pleasure you're looking and you're residing and you're reclining and you just be able to see you'd see a mulk and kabira you'd see a great dominion a great kingdom is yours how great. In the authentic hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi, Yaqul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, in the authentic hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi, he said, the last person, last person, huh? the last person, not the best one or the middle one, last one, who enters Jannah will stand on the gates of Jannah and see his kingdom in front of him for 2,000 years travel. 2,000 years of travel. He will see his mulk in front of him. And he will say, no one has been given what I have been given. <laughs> he will say what? No one has been given what I have been given. In another authentic hadith, the Prophet said, the last person who will enter Jannah will crawl into Jannah. And Allah will say, oh so and so, what will please you? Shall I give you this dunya, this dunya and everything in it? And the man will say, Ya Rabb, yes, yes, Ya Rabb, give me this dunya and everything in it. So Allah will send 10 times more. And the man will say, Yes, Ya Rabb. And then again, Allah will say, And 10 times more, meaning 100 times for the last person, right? And 10 times more. And then the man will say, Ya Rabb, are you joking with me? <laughs> and in this authentic hadith, it's in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet smiled until his smaller tooth could be seen. He smiled because this man, he thinks Allah is joking with him. <laughs> this is the blessings of Allah about Jannah. Ya Salam. How amazing is it? وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا عَالِيَهُمْ ثِيَابُ سُنْدُسْ Upon them and on their bodies will be thiyab, will be clothes of sundus, heavy brocade. Heavy brocade. Have you seen the brocade? Have you seen the new thobes? Has anyone seen the new thobes? Not like this miskeen thobe of mine, ya The new thobes, right? That the Shiaka and all these companies are making have nice heavy brocade. Nice designs, and nice designs up here. Have you seen them? Nice, not simple thobes like mine, but they're all beautiful designs and, you know, embroidery everywhere, right? And so Allah says, Aliyahum thiyabu sundusin khudrum wa istabraq. And upon them will be the most beautiful of clothes and heavy embroidery and brocade meaning green green clothes green in color with heavy brocade and they will be given to wear beautiful ornaments from silver and their lord will give them beautiful pure water and beautiful drink and beautiful juices for quenching them, inshallah, on the day when they enter Jannah. 
inna hadha kana lakum jazaa'an wa kana sa'yukum mashkura verily this is your reward and for you and for you is a thanks wa kana sa'yukum and your striving in this dunya is mashkura is thanks by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya akhwati my brothers my sisters islam jannah is beautiful can you see in this jann in this description allah has mentioned fitda many times qawarir min fidda wa hullun asawir min fidda etc so this is the jannah which has full of fidda there is another jannah that is full of dhahab gold so every single person will be given two jannatan wa liman khafa maqama rabbihi jannatan and whoever fears the status of allah the greatness of allah then for him is two jannahs one jannah made of silver another jannah made of fidda uh, silver and gold dhahab okay so two two jannahs and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a choice today we feel like silver or do we feel like gold it's up to us we have two types of homes two of everything and that's why two wives as well minimum two wives as well okay for every man other than the women you had in this dunya so if you have four wives in jannah you will have the four wives on top of that two of the hurul ain as well so ya miskin all the masakin around me if you're all going to have one wife then you you're going to end up with only one i don't know about you but it's an eternity too long ya akhi with only one woman and that's why allah starts with two isn't it true fankihu ma taba lakum min an nisa mathna wa thulatha arba mathna two wa kana ibn baz rahimallah yaqul that's why ta'addud is sunnah okay that's why polygamy polygamy is sunnah and that's why sunnah meaning recommended and that's why ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu used to say tazawwaju ya ibadallah marry more o oh brothers and o oh brothers o oh slaves of allah for verily the best of you were the ones who was in the most number of women <laughs> who's that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had 11 wives mashallah طيب ان هذا كان لكم جزاء وكان سعيكم مشكورا verily this is a reward for you and indeed your striving in this dunya is rewarded by allah inna nahnu nazzalna alayka alqur'ana tanzila verily we are the ones who have revealed the quran to you a descending from allah tanzila meaning descending from allah fasbir li hukmi rabbika so be patient for the command of your lord wala tuti' minhum athiman aw kafura and do not obey from them athiman a sinful person aw kafura or a disbeliever do not obey those sinful or the disbelieving people from the quraish or from the disbelievers wadhkur isma rabbika and remember the name of your lord bukratan wa asila meaning make dhikr of allah bukratan meaning in the morning wa asila and in the evening So at this time we should be making dhikr of Allah azza wa jalla before the sunset. We should be making adhkar. We should be remembering the, the, the dhikr of Allah azza wa jalla. Ya akhwati, if you are doing the dhikr correctly, it will take you 20 minutes approximately to do all the sunan adhkar. Okay? That has been reported of the adhkar in the morning and the adhkar in the evening. It will take you approximately 20 minutes. So do not be in a hurry. Every morning after sunrise or before sunrise after fajr before sunrise make dhikr of allah azza wa jalla and ya akhwati remember the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do you know how you can get the ajr of hajj and umrah every day in the authentic hadith in bukhari the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever makes dhikr after the fajr salah without speaking to anyone and without leaving his place in the masjid he makes dhikr until the sun rises and then he prays the salat al duha the two rak'ah right two rak'ah salat al duha when can you play salat al duha 15 minutes 10 minutes or 15 minutes after sunrise qayd al rumh when the sun has risen qayd al rumh which is the height of an arrow approximately 10 to 15 minutes after sunrise okay so if you pray salat al duha at that point you get the reward of hajj and umrah together hajj and umrah together every day this is the reward of dhikr So do not belittle dhikr wallahi how great and amazing is dhikr and did i tell you about the story of muawiyah ibn muawiyah al-laythi muawiyah ibn muawiyah al-laythi rahimahullah was one of the sahaba who was known to make dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time until the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
that when Mu'awi ibn Mu'awiyah Layfi rahimahullah passed away, 70,000 angels, sab'una alf min al-malaika nazalu. They came down to pray on the janazah of Mu'awi ibn Mu'awiyah Layfi rahimahullah. Just because he used to, because he loved to say, Qul huullahu ahad Allah ta'ala, that's it. Qul huullahu ahad Allah sallam, lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam How long does it take to say, Qul huullahu ahad? Six seconds. You can say, Qul huullahu ahad, Ten times in one minute, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says Qulhullahu Ahad three times, he has the ajr of the Qur'an, the whole Qur'an. Another authentic hadith, he said, whoever recites Qulhullahu Ahad ten times, authentic hadith in Musnad Ibn Ahmed or Tabarani, he said, whoever recites Qulhullahu Ahad ten times, Allah will build for him a palace in Jannah. Subhanallah, so amazing, so easy to do, so easy to do. Tayyip. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ بُكْرَةَ وَاصِيلًا And remember your Lord in the morning and in the evening. Meaning if you want this Jannah, ya ikhwati, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dhikr of Allah. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ And at night, prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning pray your tahajjud prayer. Do not leave it. Remember we took Surah Muzammil. Remember now we're doing Qiyam al-Layl and we're doing Taraweeh. Please, ya ikhwati, don't forget this after, after Ramadan. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ Even if it be two rak'ahs, ya ikhwati, do not leave it. Every night, two rak'ahs, after Isha. If you cannot pray the last part of the night, then pray the first part of the night. But do not forget your tahajjud salah every night. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ And from the night, prostrate to him. وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا And praise him a long duration of the night. Meaning? Whilst you're lying down on your bed and you're trying to go to sleep, remember Allah subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Sabbihu laylan tawila. And praise Allah for a very long duration of the night. Inna haula. Verily those people, meaning the disbelievers, yuhibbun al-ajila. They love to be in a hurry. Wa yadharuna wara'ahum. And they leave behind them. Yadharuna wara'ahum. They leave behind them. Yawman thaqila. A very heavy day. A very difficult day. نَحْنُ خَلَقْنَاهُمْ وَشَدَدْنَا أَسْرَهُمْ We are the ones who created them. وَشَدَدْنَا And we strengthen their, their structure. أَسْرَهُمْ means their bodies. We are the ones who gave them strength. We gave them strength in their bodies. شَدَدْنَا أَسْرَهُمْ وَإِذَا شِئْنَا And if we want, بَدَّلْنَا أَمْثَالَهُمْ تَبْدِيلًا And we will change the example of them. From their strength into one of weakness, from their young to old, from their health to one of sickness. We will change them. This is nothing but a reminder. So whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wama tashauna, ya Rab, ya ikhwati. This is an important verse. Faman shaatakada ila rabbihi sabila. So whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah. This is very important. Why did Allah say, let him take a path? Sabila is nakira. Nakira means unrestricted, undefined. So Allah said, let, let him take a path, not the path. Why did Allah said, let him take a path? Because ya ikhwati, this is very important. Very important. Our Shaykh, I remember him talking about this. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us only one way to worship Him or one way to excel in our worship of Him. He has given us the way of Umar radiallahu anhu. He has given us the way of Abu Bakr. He has given us the way of Khalid and Walid. He has given us the way of Abu Hurairah. He has given us the way of, of Fatima radiallahu anhu. He has given us the way of Zainab radiallahu anhu. Do you know what I'm saying? He has given us the way of Ibn Abbas. He has given us the way of multiple ways. Jannah does not have only one gate. It has eight gates. So you don't, if you cannot excel in fasting, perhaps you can excel in salah. If you cannot excel in salah, perhaps you can excel in da'wah. If you cannot excel in da'wah, perhaps you can excel in tahajjud. If you can't excel in one ibadah, you can excel in the other. Does that make sense? So, فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا So whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah. Ya ikhwati, I know what Allah helps me in. I know Allah helps me in teaching. Whenever I want to teach, Allah helps me. Allah gives me people who will set up the microphone, set up the classes. Students will come. Wherever I go, Alhamdulillah, Allah has helped me teach. So I know I can excel in being a teacher. 
Each one of you, Allah has given you one skill, one way of excelling as well. Something Allah will make easy for you. Why and how do I know this? Because Allah, because the Prophet said so in the authentic hadith in Bukhari. He said, "Kullun muyassarun lima khuliqalah." Every person, every human being, is helped for the purpose he has been created. So you have to discover what Allah created you for. You have a purpose. Allah has a purpose for which He created you. Do not waste your life thinking that your purpose is to be a doctor or a lawyer or a mechatronics engineer or an IT graduate. This is a tool, a means. Just a tool to get money or status or whatever else. A tool. This is not the ghaya. This is a sabil. This is a means, not the wasi. This is a, not the ghaya, not the goal. Your goal must be something else. What is the reason for which Allah created you? Figure this out. I know some brothers, for example, Allah has made them to be reciters of the Quran. Allah has given us such beautiful voices. Maybe Allah has not given you that. He's given you some other skill. So, فَمَنْ شَاءِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا Whoever wills, let him take a means and a path to Allah. What does Allah want with you? Very difficult question to answer. But you have to answer this question. You have to ask Allah, Oh Allah, what do you want with me? You have to spend your time on the weekends, just you alone, thinking, Ya Rabbi, guide me. The Prophet spent six months of his life in the cave of Hira. What is my purpose, Ya Rabbi? What is your purpose? Do not spend your lifetime without knowing what your purpose is. Figure it out. Allah has a purpose, specific purpose with you. So Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu was not a alim, was not an alim. His purpose was to be the sword of Allah. Whereas Ibn Abbas, his purpose was, was to be an alim of the Quran. Whereas Abu Huraira accepted Islam in the seventh year of Hijrah and he memorized more hadith than everyone else. 3,200 and something hadith from Abu Huraira reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu authentically. Allahu Akbar, can you imagine that? One man. So his purpose is clear. So ask yourself, what is your purpose? فَمَنْ شَاءَ Whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah. So figure out what is, what is the one that Allah has desired for you. What is the one through which you will enter Jannah, insha'Allah. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَيَّا شَاءَ اللَّهِ And you cannot will except if Allah wills. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowledgeable and most wise. يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ he enters whoever he wills into his mercy. And the wrongdoers, Allah has prepared for them a very severe trial. Ikhwati, let me recite in Arabic. Listen to it now. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hal ata ala al insanihinum minad dahri lam yakun shay'am madhkura. إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا إنا أعتدنا للكافرين سلاسل وأغلالا وسعيرا إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَلَقَّاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَسُرُورًا 
وجزاهم بما صبروا جنة وحريرا متكئين فيها على الأرائك لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمهريرا ودانية عليهم ظلالها وذللت قطوفها تذليلا ويطاف عليهم بآنية من فضة وأكواب وأكواب كانت قواريرا قوارير من فضة قدروها تقديرا ويسقون فيها كأسا كان مزاجها زنجبيلا عينا فيها تسمى سلسبيلا ويطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون إذا رأيتهم إذا رأيتهم حسبتهم لؤلؤا منثورا وإذا رأيت ثم رأيت نعيما وملكا كبيرا عاليهم ثياب صندس خضر وإستبرق وحلوا أساور من فضة وسقاهم ربهم وسقاهم ربهم شرابا طهورا إنا إن هذا كان لكم جزاء وكان سعيكم مشكورا إنا نحن نزلنا عليك القرآن تنزيلا فاصبر لحكم ربك ولا تطع منهم آثما أو كفورا واذكر اسم ربك بكرة وأصيلا ومن الليل فاسجد له وسبحه ليلا طويلا إن هؤلاء يحبون العاجلة ويذرون ويذرون وراءهم يوما ثقيلا نحن خلقناهم وشددنا أسرهم وإذا شئنا بدلنا أمثالهم تبديلا إن هذه تذكرة فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه سبيلا وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله إن إن الله كان عليما حكيما يدخل من يشاء في رحمته والظالمين أعد لهم عذابا أليما جزاكم الله خير يا أخوتي الحمد لله this, this brings us to an end of our beautiful surah surah insan please try and memorize it learn it recite it and alhamdulillah fall in love with this surah and above all, implement it. Remember, two types of people must always get your help every day. An orphan and a miskeen. Every day, every day, every day, every day must be an orphan you sponsor and must be a miskeen that you feed. Every day, equity. So that be Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records you of those people who have fed people from His love. Zakumullah khair, equity. Tomorrow, be Allah, is our last surah. And that is Surah Mursalat. Insha'Allah, Mursalat are the angels. Wal Mursalat, the angels that come in ranks. Insha'Allah, we will talk about them tomorrow. Bi'ithnillah, don't be late.